Hey Internet, uh, I'm going to try to make a quick Glyphs tutorial uh, follow-up. Um, not Glyphs Mini, but actually the full version of Glyphs, uh, the latest 2.5.2, um, to show you how to take a single weight Glyphs, it could be a Glyphs Mini file, but a single weight Glyphs or UFO file, um, and use multiple masters to make it variable and interpolate however many weights um, you want. In this case, weights. Same thing could apply to widths if you just wanted to make a condensed version to an extended version. Um, it's a quick overview. This isn't going to be the whole font. I'll just show you how to get set up with components and uh, spread those across a few different letters. Um, and it's, it's quick and dirty. This is for Glyph, so Windows users, um, same principles apply to FontLab, and FontLab 6, which also has a free trial, um, is really solid. Uh, and just it's a just different interface, um, but you can make something similar. So go check that out too. Um, and I'll switch it over to the screen, and here we go. Uh, you should have installed the full version of Glyphs, um, not Glyphs Mini, but full version of Glyphs, or at least gotten the trial. and. Um, ideally you'll have a good source file to work with. Maybe you made a font in Glyphs Mini um, or if you're just experimenting um, you can work with a, someone else's source. Um, so we'll take League Gothic. Uh, I already downloaded it and we're gonna just open that League Gothic regular which is one you know one style. We're gonna open that in Glyphs, the full version of Glyphs. Um, so we're going to look at the, the basics um, to keep things really streamlined because um, it can be overwhelming um, going from sort of one finished master to then multiple. But that's that's the goal here is to make multiple masters. So we have a regular weight to start with. Um, you know, we actually <laughs> we don't want regular. We want the extremes. I think it's easiest in working with the extremes. Um, extreme like the heaviest or the thinnest, the widest or the, the narrowest. Um, so we set that to heavy and we we're giving that axis coordinate the weight of 900 and then we're going to duplicate it um, and we'll name that one thin and we'll give that coordinate 100 and the stems will have to change um, eventually but it, this is just it's fine for now the other thing we need to do uh, to make this sort of variable ready and compatible is go to the font here and add a custom parameter double click in axes uh, double click on the value. Um, we're just working with the weight and so it luckily has predefined all of that. Click OK. And um, I like to, you can change the icon over here so you can tell sort of what version you're working with. The thin one we can go thin weight, heavy we can go heavy. That doesn't really do anything other than provide a visual reference um, here. Now you have these buttons that didn't exist before that shows you which master you're working with. Um, it's easier to tell them apart when your, uh, when your glyphs are different, but because we just duplicated it, it's this, it looks the same. Same with over here, you can tell, thin, heavy. Um, and the only other thing we're going to do before starting to actually edit uh, a glyph and show the ver how, how things can interpolate and be variable is add some predefined instances, some straight up. Um, all the way 100 through 900. So in, in terms of style and, and weight, we can copy paste to get going. Um, so just give me a minute and I will plug in one, 100 through 900. We have our, our nine different weights. This was about the original. The, we're going to say the regular was uh, was where the original master is. We're actually going to take that original master though and go um, thicker and thinner. So let's start to do that and then we'll actually be able to see it happen across all of these. That's kind of why we did this first um, as we make tiny little changes. Um, so let's pull up the N. So this is the N and the thin master, which is the same as the thick master, but both of these need need to be a little different. Um, and we're going to use components just for the sake of uh, moving moving quickly. Um, so as the only other thing to to note of importance is is master compatibility, and and there are several different things that you're going to want to check 
with. Right now, they're, these are compatible masters um, because they share the same number of points, um, the same number of handles, uh, and the same path order and direction. This is actually showing, it's actually, I think, going in the wrong direction and building out a weird one first. Um, so you can actually to fix that, highlight it, you know, command all, and then command shift R, which actually is the same as going to um, correct path direction. And we'll fix that. We've lost compatibility in correcting it. Um, so we'll go to the other master. Um, the way to toggle quickly between these is command one, command two. If you had a third master, it'd be command three. So highlight all. Command Shift R to correct the path um, direction, and it's changing which one gets built up first. And now um, you can see how we make change to one one point, and it changes everything um, incrementally across the interpolated uh, instances. Um, it's pretty neat. It's not making any changes to this heaviest one because that's uh, what this point is for, the heaviest. So it's all about um, the, you know, this all the, these uh, variations in, in between are, are being calculated um, based on where you put the thinnest one or the the, the thickest one. Um, so we're going to just do a really quick version of um, expanding on this weight. Like I said, this is the regular weight. We're going to go thinner and thicker. Um, and I said I'm going to use components because you might find that handy. I don't usually use components. Um, but here we go. So say goodbye to say goodbye to this, and we're going to lose master compatibility. You'll see these will all go away when I delete that, because um, we're just going to turn this little curve into a, a component. I'm actually going to clean it up first. I didn't I didn't make this n. Um, I did some work on League Gothic, but not this particular style. So I'm going to tidy it up, and I'm going to pull up um, a B and an H just for reference because you'll see they're very similar forms although those are you know all different and that's why I'm showing you how to use a component um, so that you don't have to make this change you know four five six different times um, so we'll highlight everything there and I'm gonna go to glyph component from selection and you can name this component whatever you want um, as long as you can kind of remember what it is so I'll just say lowercase um, curve whatever you can call it something just remember and I like to make my curve or my curves my components um, I like to zero out sort of the side bearings I'll copy that one into the, this the other master the heavier master um, and now we need to actually start making some changes um, all we've done is made a component. This is our N. <laughs> um, this is the component that goes in the N. And right now they're the same weight. Um, but I think it's actually easier to, to start with a, a stem first. Um, so we'll go into the light weight of the N. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Um, and this is where we want to decide sort of how how thin we want how extreme or how you know the, the width of this ex extremely thin weight and let's just choose 20 um, and we can position that there and fix the side bearing so it's not getting cut off even though we'll probably shrink it back down in a minute um, and we can then copy this into the other master paste it and look we're compatible again um, and now is when you can really start having fun um, seeing things start to change across all, all the different weights. Um, for instance, we'll just drag this over and make it like what, 160. Let's go with 160. I'm pulling up these coordinates by pressing down Control Option Command. Um, there are other plugins that will show the stem width, um, but I'm just, I think it's pretty quick to press those three buttons. They're right next to the spacebar. Or you can just highlight um, two points and see the distance between the two points. Um, but we want this to be, what did I say, 160, so we'll go down by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then fix the side bearing there. Um, sweet. So we have a very rough, it actually looks like an R right now. Um, what does the R look like? Okay, so good to know. Um, our thin version, our thick version. And now we want to actually edit the component. So let's edit the light one first. Um, 
and presumably we want this to match. So we'll want this to go to 20, I think is what we set, 20. So I'll just pull this over quick and dirty. Make this however you want, however you're comfortable drawing um, your, your paths, whatever best practices you know. As long as the, the points and the handles, um, the ordering is, is compatible, you'll, you'll be good to go. Um, oops, I don't want to do that. And uh, yeah, what did I say? 20, that's what we want. 18, 19, 20. All right, so the width is right. The curve is still a little wonky. Um, that's okay, I'm gonna pull that in, pull that up. And now we can figure out what we want our other sort of stem. We don't want it to be 20. Uh, well, maybe we do. We a little tinier. Pull this up. Oops. Okay, but I don't want to labor over um, the the fine points of this end uh, too much right now, because I just want to show you how the variable font can work. Um, and you might wonder where the rest of this is. I will I will make it. Um, and we'll just copy this over for now. This isn't the best practice, but I think in the early stages of drawing a glyph, um, it's fine because what I would typically do is then probably um, de decompose things uh, before before finishing them. Um, it's just, I think, a little, a little easier to work with. Sometimes components can, if there's overlap, like weird overlap, um, they, they won't look right or not be compatible at all. This is a funny little thing here. Okay, so the top of that wasn't 20. <laughs> the bottom was 20, um, which makes me think the top of this is 19. There we go. All right, um, thin one, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll make it compatible. So we can take this, copy, paste it, and drag that out. All right, now that's just matching that component, but we have to make that component bigger, and we want it to be 160, so we can make this 160. Oops. 160, okay? We'll drag this component out to also be 160. We can nudge it if we want, knowing that we have to go 59 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, okay? And we're just making some adjustments here. We might want it to be a little thicker up top. Um, 160. I'll zero that out. Okay. 160. We'll give it space. So there we go. We have a N that is interpolating um, across the, the weights that we specified. Um, these red uh, triangles are, are sort of anchor points, um, in this case being used to determine where the, the diacritics, um, which are also components, uh, being used to determine where those are going to position. You could obviously move that up or down, um, but we're not really messing with that for now. I'll give it a little more space. Okay, so basically <laughs> we have to do what we just did um, for that N for a whole bunch of other glyphs to make it variable. Um, but that's not too hard right now because uh, we're using components. So I will copy those just into the H here. Um, now the the ascender height and the cap height for League Gothic seem to be the same, um, which is fine. That's just how this font is. So we have an H, it's not compatible um, because it's using the old H here and the other master. So we'll pull in that N. Um, obviously you can make it so that your H is not the exact same as your N, but then I'm just giving a quick demo. Um, move that up if we need to. Or you can just not worry about the anchors for now, it's fine, do your thing. Um, but we have the H, okay. And again, it's close to a B, and that's kind of why I made this curve the way I did, uh, this component rather, so that we could do some, some snazzy copying and pasting here. So we take that component, copy it, flip it up on the bottom, and since thing, paths are going in the right direction and everything, um, it'll, it'll, it should line up. Um, oops. 
I want to check that over here. 160. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we have some, some variable letters. It's cool. It's cool to see how they change uh, in static versions, but we can actually preview it as to how they would uh, interpolate kind of on the fly. Let's get rid of that R. Okay, ready? So there are two different ways to do this. Um, one, you could just export it straight up, um, and I have it going to the Adobe Fonts folder. You want to export as a GX file. Um, at this path. Um, and if that GX variable fonts tab isn't available, I'm not sure if it is because I've been on the latest version of Glyphs for so long, you want to make sure, open up updates and preferences that you're showing the cutting edge version. Um, check for that update, get the cutting edge version, install it, reopen it, and then you will be able to export it as a font. So you could then open that variable font in Photoshop or Illustrator. I think those are the only two apps that are really supporting uh, variable fonts that I know of. Or you could, you know, generate a web font preview, which is cool. You, to do that, though, you'll need to go to Mecha Blue, um, who's a, he's a uh, Glyphs developer. Check out his, his scripts. Just get them all. Install all of these because they're super helpful. Um, they're fr and it's, you know, it's free, so why not? And it will just make your life easier. And you can go to test um, web font, variable web uh, font test HTML. And that'll export to your to your folder, uh, the same folder that you ideally exported the the variation file to, and then you can pop that open. In a, I'm I'm just using Safari, which might look a little weird, but what did we do? We did uh, HBN. Um, you can sort of preview uh, how they're going to interpolate right there in your browser, um, which I really think is is the biggest advantage to variable fonts is using one file to serve, you know, countless um, instances of a, of a single font. If you don't want to go through all that export process um, and you have got, uh, have downloaded MechaBlue's scripts, you can, um, under scripts, masters, choose the OTVAR player. Uh, it might take a second to generate, but then you can use the slider here um, and you can play it, which is fun to watch, but it's also, I think, really useful to sort of see um, I use the animation uh, to, to sort of see how well it, it interpolates. Um, you can kind of notice good or bad things um, depending on how your font was built. And that's that. So have some fun. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, not, it's a lot of work, but it is worth it. Uh, <laughs> you can see we got a ways to go, and that's just for the basic. Uh, there's a whole lot to do. Um, and it's a labor of love, but I love to do it. So good luck, and shoot me any questions if you have them. Thanks.